his work and his research because he talked about aliens. <laughs> well, the, from my perspective, it's like, look, I do not know if there are aliens or if they're not. I haven't spent a lot of time. However, the things that I have seen are put out by various secret societies to misdirect you away from what's actually going on. There is no supernatural explanation needed to explain the human behavior and the social engineering that's been going on. I can show you logical, reasonable, factual data on how this is all going on. So we don't need to include little space people who make us feel like we can't do anything about our own history or our own future. We can do it. You are the most important person in your life. You know about yourself better than anybody else. You know what's best for you. And what's best for you is probably not looking out to the, you know, someone else from another planet going to help us or, or hurt us. Let's just look at what's going on here. Let's look at who we call our leaders, why we let them lead us, how we got convinced to let them lead us in the first place, and why we have people that we follow anyway blindly. Shouldn't the people in government, aren't they there working for us, representing our interests? I don't know the last time that anyone's senator or congressman was like, you know, hey, what do you guys think we should be doing in this situation? Obviously, they think once they get in there, is whoever's got the biggest check in the checkbook, hey, yeah, I got your position right now. Page me on the Senate floor. Just let me know what, which way to vote. Did the check clear or not? That is literally how it works. Cause I've been there with congressmen and senators, you know, work you know because i had friends that worked uh for, in their offices and stuff when i lived down in dc and virginia everyone down there is working an eighteen thousand dollar a year uh job in one of these places taking their their you know calls from a banker or a lobbyist and telling them what to do in our government so we have no more direct communication with our senators and congressmen and, and supposedly elected leaders so i say let's start with a clean slate let's have this next election be all sorts of people all sorts of 9-11 truthers and activists and artists and filmmakers who say look I have a better idea what's going on because I've been doing the homework and I'm going to go out there and just, you know, it's not about getting elected. It's about making these other scoundrels improve their game, you know, because it, 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 the way it's going, it's like if they want to rule the world and they want to do all this stuff, that's cool. You guys have been doing it for 5,000 years. Awesome. Really proud of you. Not very creative, but you guys are consistent, right? So here's my point. You guys did it. I didn't know about it for a long time. So clean up your game so I don't have to know about it ever again. So you guys go into the background and visibly control everything to your fucking heart's content, right? But when I have to spend so much of my time looking at the idiotic shit that they purvey out there, asking people to believe it, and then seeing all these people being dumbed down and wasting their human existence and the preciousness of their life being consumed by Britney Spears and Michael Jackson and all this other stuff that they're putting on to misdirect you, right? And if you look into what Michael Jackson said about the New World Order and all these other things that supposedly don't exist, Sony's you know, Standard Oil of New York, you'll see why he's dead and there's a bunch of people making money off his records today. He was killed. It was a homicide through pharmaceuticals, which currently isn't that illegal. So it's an easy way to pop out somebody who's about to go on tour and influence millions or hundreds of millions of people with love and humility and you know, a sense of expressing yourself creatively – and changing the world because you're never going to get world peace until you find peace in yourself and you're willing to hate no one. And that's what these people don't want. They want you to pick up arms. They want violence. They want hate. They know exactly how to make money from that. But they do not know how to make money from peace. They do not know how to make money from hemp or a hemp economy and saving our planet and ourselves at the same time. All the facts are out there. We put them in the first edition of Tragedy and Hope, but there's 180 pages in there. You've got articles, audio, video, everything on the energy solution, the financial solution, the, the health, health, care, health scare situation. And we, we show you not only the tragedy, we not only show you what's going on, but we show you the hope. We give you the solutions. It's the only magazine in the world focused on giving you the solutions to the biggest problems that face mankind. So it's not, you know... It's not something I ever have to try to go and sell. I just have to let people know it's there and what it is and what it holds, and they kind of do the rest because it's logical. It's a logical extension of the Internet because it organizes data, and without organized data, knowledge is not power until it's organized and directed at a definite end. That's what Tragedy and Hope is. It's a practical application of everything we've talked about in this whole show. It is a way that is there to empower yourself, other people who are producing content and media, other people who want to get involved and just want to do something small every month that adds up to the whole world of difference that you're in part experiencing within the confines of this audio interview. I think that that is probably the best way to cap this off. And I, I think it all kind of culminated with the reality that these people, yeah, like, like you said, they aren't necessarily sinister, evil creature monsters. They're people with names and addresses, and a lot of what they've done has a paper trail. 
And the other solution, too, is that we, we, we can see that. We can more or less just say no. And there are solutions. So just as, you know, these guys, you know, have names and addresses, the problems have solutions, ultimately. And again, the media has pretty much always told us that you have no power, you have no control, people smarter than you have it all figured out, so just don't worry your pretty little head about it. But if there are those two things that we hit, I feel like ending corporate personhood and growing hemp is your, really kind of gets at the heart of really, I think, what we could do with real, with real changes. Well, I'll even take it one step further. I would just make this simple observation – it's a quote from a guy named Daniel Boorstin, who used to be a, a librarian of Congress, and he's also a Rhodes Scholar. So Cecil Rhodes, and his, his will, is sending this quote to you, and it can set you free. Because here's what it says. It says, the greatest obstacle to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. So stop thinking that you know something without having done it, right? Belief in ideology, the, the doing of things that we don't know what they mean, but we do them anyway, Right. If you, if you replace what you think you believe and, and see that belief is a placeholder, it's an invitation for you to fill in this area with some real experience, with some learning, some doing on your own. Do not rely on your beliefs. Your beliefs are a blind spot that you have not investigated yet. And do not put any faith on anything that has been given to you by another human being who was here years ago and created some status quo that you're inheriting because other men have kept it alive to control you through your mind. Unless there is... I, I don't think so. I think that is probably the summation uh, of this. Is but I'll I'll give you the opportunity. Is there anything else that you want to you want to put out? Any, you know, tragedyandhope.com is is the current focal point. Is the is the project? Tragedyandhope.com is the world's uh, first online multimedia magazine made specifically to empower you with the information that corporations can't afford to give you, literally can't afford to give you, because if they gave it to you, they would lose their advertisers, they would lose their power in your lives, because they haven't figured out a way yet to make money from being truthful. So tragedyandhope.com, you can subscribe for a free two-week trial. Uh, go ahead and sign up, get into the Tragedy and Hope community, start to experience the fear-free area and the resources and the tools that we give you. Uh, and put at your disposal. There's also the brain with 3,500 different items connected up, so it can help expedite anyone's journey through uh, all this, uh, you know, this myriad and multitude of information that we have to take in to find out where we are. There's a bunch of friendly people in there who've been uh, patiently uh, waiting along with our our lengthy pieces of media over the past several years, and uh, you know, it's it's unlike any other place out there, and it was created specifically for you if you're interested. Richard Grove, thank you so much for appearing on Media Monarchy. And again, this was sort of a, a pivotal time. This was, I believe, the time to do it. We're here at the eighth anniversary of something that had ripples effect and affects both ourselves and everyone else in the world. And we're just here trying to disseminate the information. So again, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this. It means a lot to me. Hey, James, uh, it means a lot to me. And I want to thank you and your audience uh, for you know, just doing what you guys do out there. I mean, showing up every week to download a podcast is not hard work, but finding the time to break your habits, put it into your schedule, to listen to it, to take some notes, and to take something positive from it is, is you know, that's half the battle. The other half is just showing up. So turn off your TV, go to the library, leverage your Netflix subscription, get the Medici disc. There's like a three or four disc set. Learn all about this stuff. Stop watching Hollywood productions, cancel your magazine subscriptions, and vote with your fork. That's all I got. All right, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to an interview with Richard Andrew Grove of TragedyAndHope.com. I really appreciate all you guys who are out there listening to this broadcast. My name's James Evan Pilato. I'm the host and webmaster of the site and show MediaMonarchy.com, coming to you from September 10th, 2009 in Portland, Oregon. I want to, again, thank my guest, Richard Grove, and thank you guys for listening. Hey, just uh, just so you know, it's now September 11th here, so we ac actually got all the way into the day, and we've started off the day right with a little healthy, nutritious activism. Thanks so much, James. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. There we go. Sweet. Did you get every? Did you get everything you wanted? Oh man, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> There's, you know, and that's as you know, there are times, and this is probably just.